All right, welcome back to the Mercury Gymnasium, Paula Sullivan Court, as we get set for game two of our doubleheader, as the Stonehill men's team will be hosting the Penn men from southern New Hampshire. Charlie Berger on Brian Buckley at courtside. Mike Manley upstairs is our director and producer of our broadcast on NE10. Now there are the numbers. Stonehill coming in with a record of 16 and 10 overall, 12 and 6 in the Northeast 10. The Penn men 15 and 10 overall, 8 and 9 in league play. It is senior day, and in just a couple of minutes, we will be stopping to honor Michael Bowen. Will Morton and Brandon Twitty, three seniors that we have had the pleasure of watching for the last four years, Coach. Yeah, it's been great watching them, and it's hard to believe they're seniors. It happened so fast. I can remember when Will Morton first came in, I said, a kid from mini Minnesota? How's he end up at Stonehill? <laughs> yep. And wow, has he been a, a great player. And Michael Bo Bowen, on the other hand, a local guy, played at Mansfield High School. He's been one of those guys that just Gets it done on the glass and is, hangs around the basket and it lets everybody get the limelight, but he does all the dirty stuff. And Brandon Tweedy, what can you say about that? Brandon Tweedy, excuse me, played uh, at Catholic Memorial in high school. I saw him play. He was a great player. It seems like it was yesterday. Yep. And now he's a senior. He's a great scorer. Recent uh, member of the Thousand Point Club here at Stonehill and has had a great career as well. And, had to believe the three of them are seniors, but they are, and this will be their last regular season game on this court. And when talking to Chris Kraus at halftime of our women's game, the one point that he really stressed about his three seniors, they're just good kids. And as he even said, they're not good kids, they're good men. They have grown from kids to men over their four years here at the Mercer Gym. So we're gonna take a break and we'll have our Acknowledgements of the three seniors. Picture is being taken. Remember, 
as the uh, teams will get a few minutes to come back out and warm up a little bit more before we get started. I just, it's always great to see the seniors with their families out there. Well, John uh, Morton, the dad of Will, made a point of coming over to chat with us after one of our games earlier this year. You know, he doesn't get to all the games, so he gets a chance at home to watch the games from Minneapolis. I should have asked him about Fargo. I often <laughs> think about that movie, Fargo, when we talk about Minnesota. It was funny. Well, you might still have your chance when this game is over. So the three seniors being honored, of course, they're starters anyway, so they'll be out on the floor first. So what is at stake for the Skyhawks today? Stonehill right now second in the NE 10's Northeast Division as they go into today. They're one game back of St. Anselm in the loss column, a game and a half ahead of third place Franklin Pierce. So the Skyhawks have already clinched a spot in the upcoming NE 10 tournament and a first round bye for the first time since 2016. But now a win today would clinch home court for the quarterfinals. So a win today means they would play one week from tomorrow here at the Merkur Gymnasium. And what we're being told at this point, always subject to change, but we're being told that if Stonehill wins today, in light of the women also playing in the quarterfinals on their home floor, the men would be a 4 o'clock start next Sunday. The women would be a 2 o'clock start, of course, opponents still to be determined. However, you still got to win that game first. And the last time these two teams met back on November 21st, it wasn't pretty. Southern New Hampshire with a 77 to 61 win. And Amon Joyce just did whatever he wanted. The 6'10 senior with 30 points and 11 rebounds against the Skyhawks on the Penn men's home floor. So there's, there's headache number one for Chris Krause trying to contain him this afternoon. Yeah, he's definitely got his hands full and he has to try to do whatever it takes to make him st that stop because it definitely would like to be opening in your in your own gym on that what is the actual second round of the tournament. Right. They wouldn't have to play a play-in game, but right. you'd definitely like to have the home court advantage. So, Stonehill usually uh, comes up with a game plan that's pretty effective with stopping another team scorer. Whether they can do that today, I don't know. And whether someone else could step up and do the job for the Penman is also something that they'll have to figure out as the game goes on. But I'm sure, like in the women's game earlier, both of these teams uh, will be playing at a high level. And for the New Southern New Hampshire Penman, they are right now in the number five spot in the Northeast 10, a record overall of 15 and 10. They are eight and nine in league play. Skyhawks also in the most recent East region rankings, number six. Again, the top eight teams at the end of the seasons will move on to the NCAA playoffs. So a lot at stake for the Skyhawks here today, not only to try to still give themselves a chance at first place, it's an outside chance at best, but more importantly, just get a chance to stay home one week from tomorrow to open up the NE10 postseason. So still a lot at stake for Southern New Hampshire. Right now they are the number five team, but Bentley is also at eight and nine. Southern New Hampshire with a win today would greatly enhance their chances to move into that number four spot and get a home game in the first round of the playoffs. So still a lot to be determined. And that's what makes this time of the year so much fun. Because there is a lot still at stake. Starters for Southern New Hampshire for the Penn men. Sean Montague, a 6'6 senior will be starting for the Penn men alongside 6'1 freshman Jakari Sanders, 6'4 junior Michael Elmonese, 6'3 junior Corey Long, and 6'10 senior Amon Joyce. Jack Perry for the Penn men in his second season. 
And for the Stonehill Skyhawks, there are your starters with Monty Ermilovicius, the junior, starting alongside fellow junior Owen Shows, and then the three seniors, Brandon Twitty, Michael Bowen, and Will Morton. Skyhawks playing a lot of good defense over the second half of the season. They are third best in the NE10 defensively, allowing just 71 points per game. Scoring, 74 a game is 11th best in the lower tier in the NE10. And for Southern New Hampshire, allowing 75 a game is sixth best, and they can light it up. 81 points per game is third best in the NE10. said uh, the last time these two teams met back on November 21st Southern New Hampshire jumped out to an early double digit lead and just never looked back with a 16 point win they mentioned the way the Skyhawks play the beach Charlie they really have improved at that end of the floor but yep. I think they've off they, they've also improved in getting uh, scoring from different areas on the court I think the Dow did not only establish the perimeter game, which they have some real good outside shooters and, and chosen, and of course, Will Morton, Owen DeGraff has got a tremendous percentage of the three-point line. But I think with the, the growth of Irma Levicious, as well as Andrew Sims inside, that they are able to, to get a lot of inside points, so they can go inside out and, and uh, see what the defense gives them. I think that'll be a strength in the playoffs be able to uh, to score from different areas on the court. Sean Mahoney, Daniel Christopher, Leon Graves are the officials. Skyhawks in their home white with the purple letters and numbers. For the Penmen, Coach Buckley. Gold and navy blue. I like that look. So here we go with game two of our doubleheader. And the tap control by the Skyhawks. Will Morton for Michael Bowen. Brandon Twitty, got to go inside of Milovicius, out of bounds to the Penman. Corey Long for Michael Almonese. Now Joyce, the freshman Jakari Sanders. Now driving and floating it up and in is Michael Almonese, who had 24 for the Penn men in that win back on November 20th. Almonese was really off balance when he shot that. He was able to get the basket anyway. Now Morton down inside. A little jump hook falls for Montier Irma Levicious, averaging eight points and five rebounds per game. Those are big baskets early, like we say. They try to establish the inside game. That'll make the outside game open up. Now Joyce pops out. Corey Long pulls back. And the rebound of Morton. Morton fifth in the NE10, averaging nine rebounds per game to go along with his 19 points, which is eighth best in league play. A foul on the... I like the way Morton rebounds, Charlie. He says fifth in the Northeast 10 in rebounding. He gets the rebound, he brings the ball up. He becomes the point guard. One of the best rebounds, it turns it right into a point guard. He's so versatile. John Mionagu picks up the foul for the Penmen. Uh, Morton drops off inside again. Irma Levicious got into a double team and scores. Well, by Martin. Again. Establish the inside game, and then we can shoot it from the perimeter. Sean Montague for Michael Almonese. Now long for Joyce outside the arc. They won't get it as the ball bounces up top of the backboard. Now some full court pressure from the penman. Morton. Up the floor for Owen Shows. Morton once again now Chose. 
Outside, Morton's three ball. Fought for inside, thrown back up and no good by Irma Lavicious. Almonese spinning. This defense that time from Cho's. Now Montague. Ooh, carried it. Now Montese outside the arc. Knocks down a three ball. Shoots 42% outside the arc, averaging 15 points, four rebounds per game. Ten men by one. Morton on the curl, driving, and scores. Boy, nice job as he just bounced off of the 6'10", Eamon Joyce. Now Joyce controls the ball deep. Now Sanders, long three. And fought for on the end line, out of bounds. The officials looking at one another. It will be stone the ball. Josh Mack going to Graff, Andrew Sims into the game now for Stonehill. Now Josh Mack for Sims. Brandon Twitty, Morton pops out. Sims facing up on Joyce. Ducks in, won't get it. Rebound Montague. Michael Almonese for Montague. Long, driving all the way through, got hit, score the basket and the foul. Call the Stonehill foul on Brandon Twitty. Play. Joe's back in the game for Twitty. Quick foul and out he came. Seen that a lot from Chris Krause this season where if someone does pick up an early foul, I think just to protect them from maybe getting that second one, they'll sit for a few minutes. Long does not complete the three-point play and the Skyhawks trail by one. Josh Mack for Owen Chos. Leaning on Jakari Sanders. Now DeGraff inside Sims. Double team gives it up for Mack to the corner and another three. Owen DeGraff, 66% outside the arc. Yeah, that's right, 66%. It's like automatic. Skyhawks by two, loose ball on the floor, picked up by DeGraff. And now Josh Mack. DeGraff, Mack to the baseline, Sims. Mack will try a three ball. That's good to see. Mack get it going early. Come off the bench when you can have your point guard come off the bench and nail threes. That puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Now Corey Long crosses over. Nice steal by Sims as he got in the passing lane. Took it away from Montague. Now Mack for Chose. Owen Chose leaning. Trying to get some space with he and Michael Almonese. Now Morton got it to the corner. Chose wanted to take it. Outside Morton will take it and will be short. On Karam to Jakari Sanders. Quickly down the floor. Look out. That's got to be a. Oh, they're going to call a block. I think uh, Will Morton might have been in the, in the semicircle there because, boy, it looked like he was planted. Chris Kraus wants an explanation. That's Tony Lafalle's number 33. Shawnee, John, you got 21. 
And they will not call it a shooting foul, or will they? Nope. Mikey Bassetto into the game now for the Penn men. Michael Bowen back in for Stonehill. Monty Irma back in as well. I can't hear myself thinking here tonight. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot, a, lot of, a lot of loud crowd and coaches to our right. A leader for a long, won't go. Tried it again, won't get it. Good defense by Michael Bowen. Josh Mack for Sims. Down inside, Irma Lovicious. And had his pocket pick from behind by Almonese, and they're going to get a reach in on Irma Lovicious. Yeah, Monty tried to make the move when he went to the basket, but brought the ball down, exposed the basketball. These guys are so quick, they can help on the weak side, and they were able to get, come in and make the steal, but Monty's got to hold that ball up higher once he's in the post. Ryan Conroy, a 6'2 freshman, into the game now for the Penn men. Pulling back is Almonese, can't get the jumper to fall, rebound Sims. Nice block out that time by the white jerseys. Oh, not an easy pass that time in the steal. Lucetto will score. You hate to give up a bucket like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just a gimme. Bowen drops it down inside. Inside out, Bowen was open for the three. He'll drive himself and get fouled. Call the foul on Ryan Conroy. His first foul. Bowen averaging five points and six rebounds per game this season. 75% from the strike. Not a scorer, but he does so many other things. He, uh, he's fine with letting the guys shoot from the perimeter. He's fine with the guys getting uh, low post moves. He hangs around the basket, draws fouls like he's at the line now, and rebounds and plays good defense. He's the type of guy you love to have on your squad. Seven minutes in, Skyhawks by five. Now Almonese for Ryogo Semino, who just came in. Almonese for Joyce, driving and got it. Boy, a lot of banging inside. They're letting him play. Six ten senior with his first bucket. He doesn't play like a six ten guy. Though. No, he doesn't. From the wing, a long three won't go for Twitty, and the ball out of bounds to Southern New Hampshire. Morton back in, Josh Mack will sit. Mikey, you got Morton. Michael Almonese for Amon Joyce, sixth leading scorer in the NE10, averaging 19 a game. Conroy driving, oh, nice strip by Bowen and then taken away by Will Morton. Now Bowen for Brandon Twitty. Back outside, Morton on the curl, driving high off the glass, gets two. That's what makes him so tough to defend. You can put it on the floor, change hands, goes to the basket, uses the glass, Tremendous body control. What can you say about Will Morton? Ryan Conroy deep. Now Elmonese sizes up a three. Got it. Nice job that time by the Penman as they reverse the basketball to get the open receiver. Nice pass by Ryan Conroy as he reversed the basketball. Found the, the shooter. He gets credit for the points, but it was a quick pass that gave him the ball where he could score it from. Skyhawks by two. Morton on top of the Stonehill logo with 10 to shoot. Morton on the drive, dropped it off for Bowen. He'll try it and make it. Nice effort by Michael Bowen that time. 
Not his forte, but he made the basket with a guy hanging all over him. I thought he could have gone to the line. Almonese gave it up, stolen away. Irma Vicious, here's Bowen in a hurry the other way. We'll wait for Cho's. Morton wide open. Long carom to Bowen. Twitty stepping through. And then spinning and losing control of the ball was Irma Lovicious. Again, brought the ball down. Almonese won't get that three to fall. Rebound Irma Lovicious. Back and forth we go. Nine and a half minutes in. Skyhawks by four. Owen chose. Irma Lovicious spinning on Joyce. Somehow got it to Bowen who got fouled. Boy, oh, great hands by Michael Bowen to hang on to that ball. They call the foul on Ryogo Semino. Skyhawks definitely trying to control the inside game. They have continually pounded it in there, trying to make things happen by going down to the low block. Free throws for the 6'4 senior. Michael Bowen's dad, Pat, is at all the games except for today because he's with the baseball team down at Myrtle Beach as they're getting ready for their season. We're going to have a preview of the baseball season featuring Coach Pat Bowen and his squad coming up at halftime. Generally, we talk to Trish Brown, the head coach of the women's team, but they have their senior day and they've got festivities going on upstairs, so unfortunately she will not be able to join us. So we'll talk a little baseball at halftime today. Oh, it's just about that time. <laughs> sure is. Pitches have reported at spring training. Owen DeGraff back into the game, as is Andrew Sims. Lucetto for Joyce. Three won't fall. Had DeGraff's hand in his face as he launched from the corner. Now Morton for Chose. Morton, long watching him. Here's Morton on the go. Pulls up and scores. The, the running left hand uh, looked like a, uh, a shot from the 1950s. The guy has so many different moves. Lucetto. Oh, nice pass inside. And there's two for Sean Montague. Oh, His nice, first points. Nice play there, Charlie. You mentioned nice pass. That was good ball movement by the Penman to get the easy basket. Montague averaging 15 points per game this season. Chose with some room. Outside the arc, a long three thrown in by Brandon Twinney. Averaging 14 points per game. Timeout Southern New Hampshire. And the Skyhawks lead by nine. We just talked about it at the top, Buck, about how, let's take, let's take a look at this Watch first. Watch a little basic move, the fake by Brandon Twitty. He'll get it, fake it, and then take the shot. And it's the little fake that got him open. And it's so, it's great when you see a fundamental like that. What a play by Twitty. Talked about back on November 20th, the Skyhawks got run out of the building at Southern New Hampshire, losing by 16. You mentioned it in our pregame. It's a different Stonehill team from November 20th, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely is. And, and all of the, the little things that we just saw there in that, in that one uh, clip was, was what has happened. You know, the kids have continually worked, continually gotten better. They've found out what their rotations are, what their roles are. And they certainly are playing much better now than they were in November, that's for sure. This Skyhawk team has the ability, like I said earlier, to go inside or out. That time it was on the perimeter, and Brandon Twitty has got the ability not only to put it on the floor and go to the basket, but he can make the big shot from the outside as well. Stonehill shooting 60%, 9 for 15, 3 for 7 outside the arc. For the Penmen, 7 of 15 for 47%, 2 for 6 from distance. And the Skyhawks with the 9-point lead, 852 to go here. Before halftime, Stonehill also out rebounding Southern New Hampshire 9 5. Mikey Bassetto for the Penmen, now for Jakari Sanders. 
Seto and Sanders play catch up top. Joyce spinning and had that shot deflected. Good tandem defense that time from Owen DeGraff and Andrew Sims. Josh Mack for Brandon Twitty. Outside Sims. Tom Morton. Outside DeGraff. DeGraff is open. A rare miss. Rebound long. Seto for Jakari Sanders. Long to the corner for Montague. And then work the perimeter. Skyhawks not giving anything up inside. But Seto's jumper won't go. And upstairs goes Sims. A lot of one and duns for Southern New Hampshire in this first half. Morton for Twitty. Twitty trying to muscle his way in. Does and scores. Now the senior showed his strength, his uh, stability, his balance all in one play there. He was able to get the shot off despite good defense. Now running out of room was Jakari Sanders able to get rid of it though. Long goes in, had his shot deflected. Comes to the corner and a three ball rattles out for Sanders. Back comes Mack. Will Morton deep. Look out, not a good pass. Stolen away, Jakari Sanders drives, won't get it. And the rebound of Morton. Here's Morton on the go. Sims. Inside Mack. Looking for help. Try to bounce pass it inside to Sims, but good defense in the steal by Corey Long. That was a, just a whole weird sequence there. Yeah, up back and forth, it was weird. Deep now, Montague. Challenged by Sims, now Brusetto. Montague has the height advantage here, but won't get it. Another rebound for Morton. Stonehill by 11 with the ball. One guy with the basketball, four guys just standing around. You got to get more movement on your offense if you want to get uh, not only a good shot, but you have a shot at getting an offensive rebound. Now we'll have a Penman foul. We'll call that on Jakari Sanders. Boy, what a pace for the first 14 minutes. Skyhawks. Shooting 60% right now to 47 for Southern New Hampshire. Owen shows Marty Ermelovicious back into the game for Stonehill. I don't think Owen shows has taken a shot yet. Another bad pass. Stolen away Montague, and he'll slam it home. It's the uh, three of those that have been stolen by the penmen today, they definitely have scouted the Skyhawks and it's the reverse pass coming at the high post. They've picked it off three times. It's very, very noticeable to me that they're, uh, they're anticipating it. Irma Levicious, offensive foul. Sean Montague draws the charge. The trail Levicious. official made the call a little late with the call. I think it was the right call, but it was late and that caused a lot of uh, indecision on the coaches' parts. Malavicious picks up his second foul, so Michael Bowen will replace him. At 5:26, I don't think Monty will get back in there with the two fouls. Almonese for Jakari Sanders. Deep now. Here's Corey Long on the drive, all the way through for two. Once he got the first step, he was going to get all the way to the glass. There was no weak side help there. So he just had easy sailing. Stonehill 11 point lead is now seven. Sims outside Bowen. They left him wide open. He'll take it. Won't get it. And in the rebounding, a foul. I'm not sure if it's going to be Sims or Bowen. They're going to get it on Sims. Fifth foul on the Skyhawks. And it's 
This is uh, this is playoff Charlie atmosphere, Charlie. I know sure it's is. not the playoffs, but it's certainly playoff atmosphere. Well, it's two teams still jousting for spots in the playoff picture. Skyhawks of the wind can wrap up a home game here next Sunday, and that'll be an offensive foul. Sims that time drawing the charge on Almonacy. Oh, check it on uh, Montague. I'm sorry, and Montague. Sean Montague motioning to the bench as soon as he got the foul, knew it was a second, motions to his coach and tells Jack Perry, I'm good, just, just leave me out here. I'm good. <laughs> and he won that one, at least for now. Sims now chose Twitty. Brandon on the goal, a little leaner, too strong. Almano see the other way. Montague. Corey Long from the wing. Montague's three ball off the mark and the rebound to Twitty. Final four minutes of the first half, Stonehill by seven. Sims, now Morton. Falling away, the floater too strong that time for Cho's. Boy, there's some athletes out here today. And yeah, contesting everything, too, these athletes. Long outside, straight away, Almonese, and that rattles home for three. Michael Almonese now with 11 points in this first half. And Chris Krause wants a timeout as the 10 men are back to within four at 27-23. Watch the straightaway three, and that thing rattled around and then hit the glass and dropped back through. Sims get out there, got his hand up, but just a hair late. And once that ball's released with a good shooter, you haven't got there before he's releasing it, even if you don't make the block and cause him to take it a little deep with the shot. That time, you just get out there late, and even though it got a lucky bounce, he was right on the back iron. So it's Michael Almonese with 11 leading the way for the Penmen. For Stonehill, Michael Bowen and Will Morton each with six. Just curious, want to go down and look at the uh, numbers from the first 17 minutes. I don't think, oh no, I think they just in the last minute or so, Owen Chose took one shot. And that's all he's had. He's, he's just, they haven't given him any room at all. Yeah, they're, they're all over him. They're making sure that he does not even touch the ball. When he does touch the ball, they're right on him. He has no space even to get a shot off. So he's making, if he does get the basketball, he's making the correct decision and passing it off. But they're not, they have, been, have not been able to get, let his trigger hand do the shooting yet. So a 5-0 run for the Penman gets them back to within four. Morton up the floor for Chose. Outside Morton. Now Chose. Sims faces up. Here he comes. Step through and took too many steps. Going to identify the defense. That time they had the double team on Sims. He still tried to force it in there. Take the shot if they give you the shot. Take the drive if they come at you for the shot. That time they were off of him and he took the ball to them. Jakari Sanders deep for Ryogo Semino. Now Joyce. Double team him. Tried to step through. Got it back and scores. And he just stayed with it. The 6'10 player. Just uh, had so much agility and, and good movement. He does not play like a 6'10 guy, like I said before. Sims leaning on Joyce. Going to need some help. Now Twitty driving. Got it back outside the arc, and the Sims three ball is good. You don't see Andrew Sims throw those threes in often, just 20% outside the arc, but 
right to the bottom of the net to give his team a five-point lead. We well, knew he'd have the open shot with the 6'10 guy in around the basket. Seto lost it on the deck, taken away by Morton. Now driving is Morton, score the basket and the foul! <laughs> wow! Folks, if you're watching this, it's pretty amazing. You know, Sims is a forward, he's 6'6", in transition, making a nice little handoff pass to another 6'6 guy to fill in the lanes. It's just amazing that these guys have that kind of agility but they have size. I love watching Division II basketball. It's really some big time players. Will Morton now with nine points. Just the body control that all of these players display at one time or another is so impressive. So it's the Skyhawks again by eight. Inside two minutes here in the first half. Joyce, DeGraff, Bothered the shot. Wow, that was a late whistle. They call the foul on DeGraff. Picks up his first foul. Boy, Joyce was falling away, and that whistle didn't come until after the ball hit the side of the backboard. Amon Joyce with four points this afternoon will get two free throws. <laughs> The Stonehill fan base across the way has been kind of there they are there <laughs> they're having fun and Chris Krause has talked about him before about how they really lift his team just give him that extra push <laughs> how about if you're home watching and one of those guys is one of your kids <laughs> <laughs> you might just turn it off and two free throws missed and of course, the fans will take full credit for it. Uh, they love it. Final 90 seconds of the first half. Bowen for Twitty. Graf pops out. Now Morton spinning through, left-handed, off the mark. Rebound Montague. Penman done a, done a good job on Morton, too, yeah, making everything tough for him. They never reset the shot clock. Shot clock was down to two seconds. These officials, especially uh, at this level, you need the three officials. One official is assigned to the shot clock. They're pretty aware of all of those situations. Do a great job. I really think the calls that they've had to make today are some tough offensive foul calls. And I think they made the right ones. Oh, hard to the basket. Oh, that should have could have been a little taunting there. That was Joyce, and he went right into the face of DeGraff. Boy, it's not a playoff game, like you said, but boy, you sure feel like it is, though. If you just walked in the building, you'd think so. Oh, absolutely. The only difference being it's not a one and done. The three ball for Morton, no good. Long carom, though. Comes to the three ball shooter, and Owen Shows knocks it down. He got free because of the long rebound. He hustled after it. Nobody chased him, got the open shot, and he took advantage. The Penman will hold for the final shot, trailing by nine. Jokari Sanders gets the clock to 10. Trying to cross over onto Graf and scores. And that should end the first half, and it does. Wow, that was 20 minutes, my friends. A lot of fun and a lot of noise here at the Merkert Gymnasium as the Stonehill Skyhawks will go to the locker room up seven at the break. Stonehill 36 and Southern New Hampshire 29. Boy, that was impressive. Very impressive. It is senior day, and they're honoring one of the seniors, the cheerleaders. And good for them. They work just as hard as the players do in their practices, so it's always great to see them also acknowledged 
here at halftime as you see the Stonehill cheerleaders out on the floor. Well, I'll tell you what, that was intense. That was 20 minutes of up and down when what's making it fun, the big crowd to begin with. But secondly, a lot of folks came down from southern New Hampshire as well. They're right behind us, and they're making a lot of noise as well. There's a lot of noise, and a lot of noise is coming out of the coaching staff. There's a lot of yelling from the coaches. Yep. I can't hear myself think. Was I that bad when I was on the sidelines? Honestly? I don't think so. I don't think so. Skyhawks by seven. As we mentioned earlier, Michael Bowen, one of the seniors for Stonehill, did not have his dad here today because Pat Bowen is the head coach of the Stonehill baseball team down in Myrtle Beach as they're getting ready for their season. Let's take a preview of the Stonehill baseball team 2020. Champions. It's been good to get back. I mean, I think the guys did a good job over break, um, kind of working on their own just so we can get back in the regular season or this in this uh, winter and just get going right away and not have to work out any kinks um, as we get back and then just build on what you did over the winter on your own. Um, guys have been putting in good work. I feel like everyone has been motivated um, and kind of seeing what we do wrong and can fix that. Um, guys have done a good job picking out what, what they need to work on in their strengths and uh, different weaknesses. Yeah, so we're definitely excited for the upcoming year. I mean, senior leadership has been great throughout the uh, fall and um, in the preseason leading up to the spring. Um, but with that being said, a lot of guys are stepping up, a lot of younger guys. Uh, freshmen are gelling pretty well with the older guys. So overall, it's been a good, good group. Uh, we have a great bunch of seniors. We have eight seniors and four captains who have done a great job of getting everyone to buy in to the program, to the hard work and practice, to the uh, weight room, to the strength and conditioning. So it's been a great benefit for me as a coach to have eight leaders of this group that really have uh, got everyone to buy into the system and uh, you know, winning ways at Stonehill. Mike's been a great coach so far. Mike really knows a lot about what he's talking about. He really digs deep into the side of pitching that we haven't got, gotten into a lot since uh, we've been here. So. I, thought, I think he's done a great job with the staff and everyone respects him. Yeah, I mean, we've had um, some turnover in our coaching staff, but I've been so lucky and uh, student athletes have had great benefit to have two guys that have come in and been able to fill the roles that we needed. Mike Young, as you know, uh, graduated last year, but his knowledge and his determination, his focus on pitching has been such a huge asset for our program to have someone who's not only done it at such a high level, but now able to coach it and communicate it and teach it at a high level has been great for our uh, pitching staff. And then Mike Dowd, who I think is probably one of the greatest players in the Northeast 10 baseball history, uh, Franklin Pierce graduate, uh, Seattle Mariners draftee, six years minor league baseball player, and now if we're able to have, to have him come in and um, teach our guys the ways, not only of a winning program like Franklin P.S., but also the mental and physical, you know, struggle it is in baseball and the grind to be able to get through it and, uh, you know, get the most out of themselves. And they've really worked great off each other because um, Bowen's been around the game for so long and coached out. Having played professionally has a different look at it rather than just from the college aspect. Um, and so especially like taking drills from past and whether we can change them or just implement a new drill. Um, to work on different parts of the swing to break it down piece by piece and not just look at the swing as one big one big thing in general. Um, they've done a great job like feeding off each other. I think the guys have learned a lot. And obviously to have uh, Luke Coletti back for his second year with us and in over 20 years here at Stonehill College as a head coach and an assistant coach is just a tremendous asset to our uh, players. Especially with the metal bats it's going to even it out a little more. I think especially for the hitters we're excited for it um, and it's nice also not having the midweek games where we can just play three four games during a weekend two of them being seven in a game so it's not like the day's going to drag out yeah i think with the metal bats especially it's going to make the pitching staff be a little stronger uh, be a little more uh, meticulous about what pitches they're throwing in certain counts and then on the hitting side of it i think it really benefits us a lot too so we'll get a couple more hits you know might not have to do as much small ball but you know, we're looking for more doubles and the gaps and stuff like that that we didn't get as much before. Um, I think one of the great things for us is our defense is going to be a huge asset for our program. We're really strong up the middle. 
with uh, you know our three sophomores coming back: Matt Donlan behind the plate, Noah Lucier at short, um, Aiden Wild at third, but also Johnny Ozanchowski who missed almost all last year with an injury. So to have that strength, the defense back up the middle is going to be a big asset for us. This is one of the better defensive teams we've had since I've been here. Um, it's definitely strong up the middle. Like Matt Donlan, our catcher, is probably one of the best. In, in the country, Division One, Two, II, or Three, so he's that good. Um, other guys are going to step up too in the, up the middle of the field, and um, yeah, a bunch of younger guys are going to make an impact too around the um, on defense around the field. So I think it's one of the best that we had. We're excited to get started when we go down to Myrtle Beach. You know, we play some of the top teams in the region, especially right off the bat with Felician uh, and Wilmington, two teams that were in the regional last year. That's where we want to be, so it's good for us to get out and compete against those guys right away. And then, uh, you know, our trip to Florida playing some of the best teams, not only in our region, but uh, in the country with Lynn University. We play Adelphi, we play Malloy, some teams that, you know, hopefully by the end of the year we're competing against for a regional spot. I know we're playing Felician this weekend, and Felician's always fun to play against. I remember my freshman year we got into it with them, and it's honestly one of the most fond memories for our senior class. And it's the first time we've played them since then, so we're excited to play them. But uh, especially Wilmington. Wilmington has had our number in, in the past couple of years. We always play them well, but this year, you know, we're going to get them. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II, and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game, because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive, to achieve every goal we aim for, because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Stonehill College is nationally recognized for its academics, commitment to affordability, and career preparation. Whether bound for the lab, stage, or stock market, our students develop the knowledge, skills, and character to achieve the highest goals. We're proud to offer dual degree engineering and business programs that allow students to attend Stonehill and our sister school, the University of Notre Dame. Near Boston and Providence, Stonehill inspires students to reach higher. Find out more at stonehill.edu. Welcome back to the Mercury Gymnasium, Paula Sullivan Court, halftime of our men's game with Stonehill leading Southern New Hampshire by a score of 36 to 29. A win for Stonehill today would give them a spot in the any 10 quarterfinals on their home floor one week from tomorrow. A loss they could still get there, but they can control it with a win here today. Some of the highlights from the first half. Stepping back, Michael O'Monesey draining that three. That was one of three threes he had in that first half, 11 points. Out of the corner, Owen DeGraff, who was just unconscious outside the three-point arc. He actually missed one today, shooting 66%. Saw Josh Mack there knock down a three. That's 66% for the year, folks. Yeah, that's for the year. Yeah, no, Lazy pass. We talked about that. Happened a couple of times, and... Down the other end, Mikey Brissetto for two. And 
Again, the Skyhawks running the weave here, and then Will Morton, great body control to throw that high off the glass and good. Owen shows back outside. You talked about that play by Brandon Twitty with that great head fake and left himself wide open for a three. And Twitty again. We talked about it. You got to be strong to be able to do that, physically strong, and Brandon Twitty is, and that's why he got two there. Twitty with five points in that first half. Again, not a good pass along the perimeter. Yeah, I believe the Penman must have uh, the Skyhawks well scouted because they stole the ball three times on that exact pass. That ball rattling home for a three ball thrown in by Michael Almonese. 11 points to lead his team in scoring. Last time these two teams met, Amon Joyce had 30 in the first half today, held to just six points as the Skyhawks really have dug in defensively. Outside the arc, you don't see Andrew Sims all that often, but he knocks down a three ball there. But the Penn men kept coming back. Watch this body control here by Will Morton on the left. He just gets it at the last moment. It just hangs in the air, knocks it down and one. One of the three Stonehill seniors playing their last regular season game here on the Merkur Gymnasium floor. You saw Joyce there just barking at Owen DeGraff. See the long carom off the miss there and then setting up and knocking down the three. Owen shows 11th in the NE10 outside the arc at 43%. A big basket at the end of the half and sure was. He, he got it by following the shot going after that loose ball rebound. So Almonese with 11 leads the way for Southern New Hampshire. Six for Amon Joyce. Sean Montague, Corey Long with four apiece. Jakari Sanders had two. Mikey Bissetto had two. A total of 29 for Stonehill. Will Morton with nine points, four rebounds. Six for Michael Bowen. Five for Brandon Twitty. Four for Armani Ermolovicius. He sat quite a bit in that first half, saddled with foul trouble. Three apiece for Owen Chose, Josh Mack, Owen DeGraff, and Andrew Sims. And a total of 36. Skyhawk shot 52% from the floor in that first half. Five for 12 outside the arc. The Penn men shooting 46%. They were three of nine from distance. Stonehill out rebounding the Penn men in that first half, 17 to 11. And they have the seven point lead at the break. Chris Krause for the Skyhawks, Jack Perry for the Penn men, the two coaches talking to their teams at the break. Coach, what are they telling them? They're telling them to keep up the intensity because this game is going to go right down to the wire with the way the teams are playing defensively. I think both of them want to uh, make sure that their teams understand the importance of defense as they head towards the playoffs, and I'm sure that's what they talked about. The intensity has been great in the first half. They want to keep it going for the entire, uh, entire ball game. With a win today, Stonehill would go to 13-6. and six and wrap up second place in the Northeast Conference. They could still finish first if St. Anselm loses their last two games. That's unlikely. So the Skyhawks with a second place finish with a win today would host an any 10 playoff game in the quarterfinals one week from tomorrow. Stonehill women will be here on Sunday. So if both teams in fact are here, we're told the games would be two o'clock for the women, four o'clock for the men. See if that all pans out. The men, the women have done their part. Now the men with their chance to wrap up some home floor advantage in at least the quarterfinals. That would be a lot of fun, a doubleheader in the playoffs. And I'm sure they get a good student body turnout. They've had a great turnout for both games today. Yeah, and, and they're not a, a crowd that's sitting on their hands. Nope. As you said, the Southern New Hampshire bought a great crowd here too. Sure did. You know, Saturday afternoon in February, what else is there to do? Let's see the Northeast, Northeast 10 play. And they've been treated to an excellent game. Both fans on both sides of this American gymnasium. Well, you and I have talked about it over the years. For your entertainment buck, you don't do much better than 
this caliber of basketball, men's or women's. Here we go, second half. Southern New Hampshire has seven points to make up, and Joyce is fouled. I suspect Jack Perry is telling Amon Joyce get a little more involved in the offense, just six points after scoring 30 against Stonehill back on November 20th. And he didn't settle for the outside shot right away, took it to the basket, get himself to the foul line. Larry Bird used to say that when my offense is struggling, get myself to the foul line, make a couple of buckets, and then get into the game that way. Amon Joyce has missed three free throws. Sixty-eight percent free throw shooter, averaging 19 points per game. So you know he's going to be going to the basket a little bit more often. And his seventh point brings his team back to within six. With some pressure, chose outside Morton thought about it. Pressured by Montague. Now chose. Morton will try it, got it. Good, good ball movement to set up Morton, who was coming to the basketball when he received it. How to defend that? Boy, he's got a quick release too, doesn't he? He really does. Corey Long for Joyce. Jakari Sanders, the freshman, for Corey Long. Montague. Five to shoot, Long will step through and score. Brandon Twitty for Stonehill. Now Morton, Bowen spinning the other way and then lost the ball. Taken away by Almonacy. Almonacy with good uh, anticipation was able to Time the dribble. Pulls up for a three ball that won't fall. And Morton will walk it back. Joes denied by Joyce. Joes again falling away. Rebound Montague. Now Montessi for Joyce. Now Montague driving, lost control of the ball, and a blocking foul will be called on Michael Bowen. That is his first foul. I don't know, Buck, I get a sense in this second half there's going to be a lot of whistles. This has been a very physical game, and they really let them play in the first half. Usually when I have a function after the game, there's a lot of whistles. <laughs> Montague. Outside for Long. Three ball from Long is good. Corey Long with a quick five points here in this second half. He's got nine. Ten men back to within four. Bowen for Twitty. Straight away chose. Malavicious trying to work on Joyce. Hesitates, had a shot blocked. And taken away by Almonacy. Jakari Sanders stepping through, got it to drop. Wow, what body control by Jakari Sanders. Timeout, Stonehill. And the Penmen back to within two. Good start by the Penmen. The start they wanted coming out of the locker room. Taking it to the basket and, like you said, making aggressive moves like that one you just saw. Timeout called by Chris Kraus. Talked about Stonehill with a chance to wrap up second place. Southern New Hampshire right now tied for that fourth spot with Bentley. And if the Penmen can move into that fourth spot, they would get a home game for the opening round of the NE10 playoffs next Friday. And again, teams cross over. So if you're the fourth spot, you're going to play the number five team from the Southwest. If you wind up being that five team, you might do a lot of traveling to the Southwest. So that game, this game means a lot as well to the Penmen. 
as they have come back from down seven at the break. Just a Will Morton three ball in the first 245 for Stonehill. Ten men on a little eight to three run. So it's a two-point game. And again, the Penn men will put some pressure on the ball. Inbound it shows. Now Sims. And shows will carry. See what the Skyhawks run out of the timeout. DeGraff. Back outside. Morton. Tend to shoot. Morton draws the double team. Oh, he comes beautifully around the corner and scores. Yeah, that was just a great move, and the defender just lost his balance, and Morton took advantage of it by taking it all the way to the glass. Now Sanders on the drive and scores. Wow, Jakari Sanders. Tremendous move inside. Two Skyhawks right there ready to bat it away, and he just ducked up and under. Yeah, he used the double pump and get the defense up, and then went underneath them with the with the shot. Shows for Twitty. Brandon Twitty trying to muscle his way past Sanders. Now Chose had it knocked away. Sean Montague scores. And we're all even. Now whistle, and again, the 30-second shot clock was not properly reset. Substitution opportunity for Chris Krause. Josh Mack is back in, replacing Owen Chose. Now DeGraff for Josh Mack. Spinning and scores. Nice, nice move by Josh Mack. Normally a, a playmaker out there moving the basketball and getting everyone involved. That way, at that time, he took advantage of the lane that was open for him. Now Montesi for Montague and now Long. Looked like he might have pushed off with the free hand, got the three ball away, no good. Rebound Sims. Josh Mack for Andrew Sims. Josh Mack looking for help, and they're going to get a reach in foul on Almonese. Picks up his first foul. Mikey Bassetto back in for the Penmen. Looping into Sims. Twitty has some room. And had his shot blocked, but we'll get a 10-man foul. I'm not sure which player they'll get. There were two there. A lot of body contact more than anything. Now they're going to get Pacetto for the foul. That is his first foul. Free throws for Brandon Twitty. Brandon Twitty, 10th best in the NE 10, shooting free throws at 81%. We'll get one more. Ryogo Semino is back in. Iman Joyce is out. Again, the Skyhawks have done a nice job thus far on Joyce holding him to seven points. He averages 19 a game. Brandon Twitty makes the two free throws. Seven now for the senior from Randolph. Stoney will lead back to four. On the drive, all the way through, inside, a whistle and a foul. And it will be free throws for Sean Montague. My goodness, can he get upstairs? They call the foul on Owen DeGraff, his second. Montague, the 6'6 senior, Yorktown Heights, New York. Averages 15 points per game, and his eight rebounds are seventh best 
in the NE10. Oh, he's going to hear about that one. Not a good free throw shooter, just 55% as you see the Stonehill fans just in disbelief. On the first try, he'll get one more. At that one. And Montague has also been held in check just five points, averaging 15 points per game. Skyhawks by three. Yeah, both, both teams have done a tremendous job defensively. Hey, hold on, a lot of players in check. If you've got to score, you have to earn it today. And a whistle and a foul. We'll have the Penn men foul called on Rossetto. Picked up a couple of quick fouls. So each team already with three fouls, and we're just five and a half minutes into the second half. And if we get down to a free throw shooting contest, advantage Stonehill. Southern New Hampshire last in the NE10 shooting free throws at just 68%. Stonehill fifth. Now Morton somehow hung on to that and threw it in right-handed. Wow, that was Morton shifting hands and using his offhand, his right hand, to knock it home. Seto for Semino, and now back deep again, Almonese. Stepping back for the three ball and got it. Is that going to count? That's not going to count. Uh, now it's a good call by the officials. The ball hit the 30-second shot clock. And Jack Perry is losing his mind off to our right here, but that was a good call. That ball clearly changed directions. They better be careful on this bench or someone's going to get rung up. Now Mack for Sims, and a push foul on Ryogo Semino who just picked up his third foul. And the fouls are piling up. So it'll be Mack to inbound. Sims inside, oh what a beautiful pass, and there's two for Montiorno Vicious. And Jack Perry wants a timeout, and he better be careful. Timeout, Penman. I'll tell you what, the officials have been patient. They just keep looking over their shoulder at him. Timeout called by the Penman. They trail by seven. Let's watch it. They just, they just showed it again, and you saw all the players immediately pointing up to the clock. You, know, you can run that back in slow yeah, motion, but you can definitely see the ball. It actually hit hits a wire in front of it. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see it. Yeah, and now the officials are giving the, giving the coach an earful. He's going to get rung up if he's not careful. And now, of course, the Southern New Hampshire fans are backing their coach. It is. Very intense. You don't, see the, you don't see this very often. No, in you this don't. League. Nope. Not where they, the, the fans get involved. Joyce three ball. Double digits for Raymond Joyce now with ten points. So the New Hampshire back to within four. Now chose. Mac. Sims driving for two. Drop by Sims, left-handed down the, uh, on the left side, was able to protect the ball from the defender with his body. Made it an easy lay-in. Not as easy as it looked, though. Was set over for Joyce. Gonna try that one, it's blocked by Sims. Picked back up, though, by Sanders, and a blocking foul will be called on Josh Mack. And for Josh, that's his first personal. Stonehill by six. Coach Jack Berry, a uh, probably, uh, Bentley grad. Boy, he has been pretty worked up over that three ball call that did not go his way. Uh, ball hawking. Skyhawks and Penn men. Hell ball will favor Stonehill. The referees are going to have a hard time 
referee in this complete game. It's getting very physical. Yep. Tempers are already flaring. A lot on the line, an opportunity for either team with a win to play a game at home in the NE10 playoffs. Stonehill is eight and two when they play on their home floor, so again, just all the more reason that a win here would give them an opportunity to play at home one week from tomorrow. It's passed by Chose to relieve the pressure. Here's Morton on the go, driving all the way through. Oh, he tried to jam it home, and we got a late whistle. And a Penman foul. They call that on Sean Montague. That is his third foul. Wow, Will Morton really went hard to the basket. That is the fifth team foul on Southern New Hampshire. Well, you're right, Buck. This game is getting harder and harder to officiate. We got a long way home. As Morton makes the first free throw, he's got 17 points. If I get time to call my wife and tell her I'm going to be a little late. <laughs> this has all the markings of a triple over game. Well, it's senior day. It's always a fun day. And, boy, you'd think they were playing for... An NCAA berth away, the intensity of this game is ratcheted up here in the second half. Stonehill by eight. Michael Almonis will just roll the ball into the forecourt. Joyce stepping through and a foul. Call that on Andrew Sims, who just picked up his second foul. So now both teams have committed five fouls. Damon Joyce will get two. Brendan Twitty back in, replacing Josh Mack for Stonehill. Joyce now with 11 points. And his team back to within six. And some full court pressure from the Penman, and then they back off as the ball comes into Morton. Back on Mike, back on Mike. Twitty looking for room. Got it back outside, Chose measures up a three ball and knocks it down. Great play by Brandon Twitty. Drive, draw, and dish. He takes the ball, drives down the lane, spots the open receiver, and hits it with a beautiful pass facing the basket. And we always talk about it. You watch this the way Twitty gets the ball in the lane and knows exactly where Owen Chose is. Gets it in the lane, sees Chose right there. And he knew it as soon as he let it go. That was nice. Owen Chose with his two threes has six points and his team now again up nine. And right after that bucket made, Jack Perry not happy, called the timeout. Michael Bowen back in the game now for Stonehill. Jakari Sanders for the Penmen. For Sean Montague. Sanders once again. Elmonese. Now Joyce. Long. Switch picked up by DeGraff. Stepping through. Sean Montague with seven points. Montague got all the way to the glass. Used his left hand to score it. Nice play. DeGraff. For Twitty, gives it to the baseline for Bowen. To the corner, and a three ball knocked down by Brandon Twitty, who goes to double figures with 10. What great ball movement there. Bing, 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 and there's the open shot. I love the way the ball moved. Almonacy 
Gives up his dribble and now long out deep. Back for Elmonesi, wide open. And he'll knock down a three. 14 now for Elmonesi. Matching threes, and we're back to seven again. Right back at you. Yep. Well, good movement. Now the game is really getting tight. Now driving. Oh, what a block that time by Sanders on Chose. And the ball bounces out of bounds. It will be Southern New Hampshire ball. Sims back in, replacing Michael Bowen. Albonacy wants to go. Gives it up for Joyce. Sanders trying to drive through, spins, and won't get it. Wow, what a fight for the ball. Right back up, a whistle and a Stonehill foul. This game is not Andrew. for the timid. These guys are really going after it. Brandon Twitty picks up his second foul. That is the sixth foul on Stonehill. Free throws for Corey Long. One more for Long. 6-3 senior from Cincinnati. Averaging 10 points and four rebounds per game. And missed them both. We talked about how they are not a good free throw shooting team. They're last in the league. It might come down to that before we're done as we are halfway home here in the second half. Sims. To Graf and now Morton. And bodies fly, offensive foul to Graf. And for Owen to Graf, that's his third foul. That'll bring Michael Bowen back in. Seventh foul on the team, so it's going to be free throws the rest of the way for Southern New Hampshire. Ten men have committed five fouls. So here's Elmonesi for Joyce. Joyce on the go all the way through. What a block by Sims. And a whistle, and what do we got? A lot of talking inside. And I think the players are all good. They, they, they're getting after it, but they're, they're talking to each other after fouls, and they're okay. But Brandon Twitty just picked up his third foul, so now you got Twitty and DeGraff each with three fouls. Sean Montague has three fouls for the penman. But it's free throws now for Corey Long. I'd get Twitty out right now just, just to talk to him. Senior day and even only for a minute. Yep. The seniors want to take a memory of winning on senior day. Right now they've got a six-point lead after the free throw from Corey Long gives him ten points. Fifty nine fifty four. Skyhawks led by seven at halftime. The lead is five. Chose for Morton. Bowen had to fight his way through Almonesi to get the ball. Morton again. Shot clock at seven. There's Morton on the go. Falling back. And good foul. Wow, that was a late whistle, too. They're going to get Joyce for the foul. That is just his first foul. Got a break there. Yeah, I agree with that. The sixth team foul on Southern New Hampshire. 
Will Morton now with 19 points. That is his per game average, eighth best in the conference, and he gets to 20 with his second free throw. And again, Stonehill by seven. Jakari Sanders for Joyce. Sean Montague. To the corner, Sanders driving, dropped it off inside. Sean Montague slams it home. A statement basket right there by Montague. Chose for Morton. Sims straight away will try it and way off the mark and the ball out of bounds to the pendant. Chris Krause will take a timeout. This is the most intensity intensity I can remember all year for the for the entire game. There's always moments of intensity, but this has been like this from start to finish. Yeah. It has been. We need water. I, I tell you, it's just so loud in here today, too. The coaches are both trying to shout out instructions to their players. I'm not sure how they're hearing anything. A big crowd, a great student body turnout, having a lot of fun across the way. There's your summary right there with the Skyhawks plus five, eight and a half to go. Chris Kraus talking to his players to our left. Jack Perry to our right. Sanders for Joyce. There's Joyce on the go all the way through and they're gonna get Sims for the foul. So you're right, Buck, you talked about this earlier. Southern New Hampshire's playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, but they're hanging in down five. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going at they're going after they're trying to get, like you say, uh, isolating one or two of their players at key moments, and they've been able to make the shots and to stay in this basketball game. But again, the Penn men are having trouble from the free throw line. Yeah, they, Joyce has to hold his follow through. That time he released it and, and, and his hand just dropped right back. He has to hold that follow through. Did that time and he brings his team back to within four. Joyce with 13. Every possession is just such a battle. Irma Levicious on the block. Trying to work his way in on Joyce. Hesitates, had his shot blocked, and they're gonna call the foul on Joyce. Oh, Joyce says get robbed again. That one he made, I thought, great defense. No, I thought Amon Joyce was holding his position, and he just had his hands up, and I think that's what he was saying to the official. I just had my hands up. What do you want me to do? That's a second foul on Joyce. And that'll be free throws for Armani Herbalavicious. So both teams in the bonus. So we'll see a lot of free throws over this final 8-0-1. Free throw by Monty. Seven for the 6'8 junior. And his two free throws puts the Skyhawks back up six. Now Sanders. Almonese, challenge there by Chose. Almonese drops it back down inside, an easy two for Montague. Oh, they ran the old screen and roll as good as you could uh, put, play it. It was just like they wrote it up. Terrific. Skyhawks by four, seven and a half to go. There's Morton. Wants the screen, takes it. Here he comes on the drive, missed it, got it back, shot clock 
did not reset. Wharton won't get that one to fall, and the rebound cleared by Joyce. Outside the arc from the wing, a three ball. Knocked down by Michael Almonese, who's got 17 points. It's a one point Stonehill game lead inside seven minutes to go. Now Bowen for Morton. Morton drives the baseline. Got it back outside, Chos falling away. Rebound out to Montague, and now the Penmen can take a lead. Whistle, and we'll get a foul. That'll be no shot. Free throws, though, for Michael Almonese. they call the foul on Owen Shows. And Michael Almonese can give his team a lead. Tenth team foul, so two free throws for El Monacy. And it will be two free throws the rest of the way. And another Southern New Hampshire miss. They are unofficially seven for 16 from the free throw line. Those freebies from 15 feet away might be the difference as Elmonese ties the game. Josh Mack in the game now for the Skyhawks with the ball. Hermela Vicious. Now Twitty. Brandon driving. Fires and won't get it. Rebound Elmonese. Outside Joyce, and now Montague. Sanders, back for Montague, and can't get it. Rebound to Mack. Every time down the floor, the Southern New Hampshire coaching staff and players looking for a foul, didn't get one that time. Now Bowen puts it on the deck, drives, won't get it, rebound Joyce. They just can't get good shots. They're really, uh, the Penmen are really playing some uh, great defense. Skyhawks are getting shots, but they're not good ones. Jakari Sanders. Challenged by Bowen. Inside, won't get it. Long carom, though, comes out to Almonese. And another 20 seconds on the shot clock, and now a timeout called by Southern New Hampshire. 5-10 to go, and we're all even at 63. Well, wow. Both teams with three timeouts, Charlie, as well. So it's going to be a long five minutes and ten seconds. It is. It's Chris Kraus pulling his team together. What a battle. 20 for Will Morton to lead the way for Stonehill. 18 for Michael Almonese, the leading scorer for the Penmen. A win for Stonehill today would give them second place in the Northeast Conference in the Northeast 10 and would give them a home game one week from tomorrow. A loss doesn't eliminate that possibility, but it would be a lot harder. Skyhawks might be forced to go on the road. So what would have to happen a win or a Franklin Pierce losing one of their final two games. And that could happen. But the Skyhawks can determine at least their own fate if they can walk off with a win here this afternoon. But with 5-10 to go, we're all even. Ten fouls already on Stonehill, so Southern New Hampshire will shoot two free throws the rest of the way each trip. Seven fouls on Southern New Hampshire. Now Sanders to the corner. Almonese launches and scores. 21 for Almonese. He had 24 in the win against Stonehill back in November. So calm and cool and collected about it, too. 
Now up and no good for Brandon Twitty. And we'll have the Southern New Hampshire foul. Again, took it into the double team. Got the foul call, but just not good shots. Eamon Joyce picks up his third foul. Brandon Twitty will get two free throws. Twitty with 10 points this afternoon. Skyhawks fifth best in the NE 10 shooting free throws at 76%. Stonehill back to within one. Jakari Sanders. Zone here. We got a little zone action. See what the Penmen do to try to solve this. I like this. I like the change of defense. Sanders. Get it inside for Joyce, and he scores. I like it until it went into Joyce's hands. He's pretty good inside, pretty good outside. Too. 15, what a play. For, 15 for Joyce. Again, Southern New Hampshire by three. Morton falling away. Wow. That's a shot he's probably practiced a thousand times a day. Looks like it anyway. Final four minutes, Southern New Hampshire by one. Al Monesey, who has been red hot, outside Corey Long, and now Joyce. Montague spinning through, had the ball knocked out of his hands, out of bounds. Owen Cho's back in, replacing Josh Mack. Thought Josh Mack did a great job on the defensive end. Montague was screaming for a foul that didn't come. 12 seconds on the shot clock for the Penn men. They loop it outside for Montague. And now Sanders. Not sure if they're aware of the clock. Sanders sees it with five to shoot. Trying to spin through. Oh, and a late whistle. And that'll go against the Skyhawks. They'll call that on Morton. That shot clock was down to three seconds. And that'll be free throws for Jakari Sanders. Those are the plays that give coaches headaches. And it's down to three seconds. All you got to do is not foul. You're probably going to end up with the basketball. Sanders now with seven points. Ten men by two. Well, you almost feel like every time your team comes up the floor, you got to score. And he makes them both. Skyhawks down three inside, three and a half to go. Brandon Twitty through traffic, got hit. Boy, he got clocked as he came through the lane, and they'll call the foul on Corey Long, who picks up just his first foul of the day. Back to the free throw line for Brandon Twitty. If you're gonna put it on the floor and go to the basket, you're gonna to have to anticipate getting hit. This is in the uh, Southern New Hampshire team, just, they contest everything in and around the basket. One more free throw for Twitty. Andrew Sims back in, or Milovicius will sit. Brandon Twitty, 10th best in the NE10, 81% from the stripe now with 14 points. It just seems as though the Skyhawks, every time Southern New Hampshire comes up the floor, gets some points, whether it's from the stripe or just making a bucket. Joyce coming through, and that is an offensive foul called on Eamon Joyce. That is his fourth foul. Nice play by uh, Will Morton to get over there in time. I didn't know if they were going to call it a block or a charge, but I, I really thought he got there in time. Everybody just kind of waiting as that whistle blew. Which way would it go? Had that been on Morton, that would have been his fourth foul. And now the Skyhawks with a chance to take the lead back. 
as we head down to three minutes to go in regulation. Now Morton for Sims. Twitty. Morton again, and an offensive foul. I think they got Bowen. They did. That is his second foul. On the dribble handoff exchange, that both players are moving. I think the official made a right call. If you're gonna, if you're gonna screen out there, you gotta come to a complete stop. Montague spinning and won't get it. And the rebound of Morton. And another chance for the Skyhawks to take the lead. Well, everybody in the gym is on the edge of their seat. This game has got so much in, in it today. Oh, what a crossover by Morton. Drives and scores. That was a big league move right there. 24 for the senior from Minneapolis. Sanders, or oh, check it long. Deep for Almonese, inside Joyce. Oh, and he had a shot blocked. Oh, I thought that was a lot of ball that time for Sims. You saw that ball just spin right out of his hand, but they're gonna call the foul on the sophomore, his third. And back to the free throw line for Eamon Joyce. Right now, Southern New Hampshire 10 for 19 from the free throw line. Joyce ties the game. A heck of a game with all the attention on him and the way the Skyhawks have defended him. He still had a great game. And he can put his team back up one again. And he does not. And the rebound grabbed by Morton. Timeout Stonehill with two minutes left. Both teams will have two timeouts remaining for the final two minutes. What do you do now? Well, it'll be a chance for Stonehill to come out of the timeout with a play. Difference in the game right now, Coach Buckley? Free throws. Stonehill 17 for 17. Southern New Hampshire with that last free throw now 11 of 20. Wow. Talked about it at halftime. If it came down to a free throw shooting contest, you'd like the Skyhawks' chances, but we're all even with two minutes left. Senior day, Stonehill seniors. Brandon Twitty, Michael Bowen, Will Morton. With a win today, we'll get a chance to play one more time on this floor one week from tomorrow. If they lose, they still might get that chance, but they know they'll play here with a win today. And there's nothing better they would like. They have such a good record at home this year as yep. compared to on the road. Yep, eight and two at home, uh, under 500 on the road. So each team has two timeouts left. So let's see what Chris Krause draws up here. Bowen, Morton, Twitty, Shows and Sims on the floor for Stonehill. Now Chose for Bowen. Lost it, got it back. Morton crossing over, driving through, and got tripped. And they'll call the foul on Almonese. That is his second foul. Will Morton again with a chance to put his team on top with 1.45 to go. Will Morton with 25 points. 25 points and probably 25 bruises. Yeah. Every time he goes to the basket. Oh, he missed that whack. second free throw. That's the first miss for the Skyhawks today. They are 18 for 19. And now we're back on the odd number. 
Almonese, deep for Long. Deep again, Almonese. Here he comes all the way through, and it, his bucket gives him 23 points and his team a one-point lead. What a drive. He was able to protect the basketball with his body and just a nice soft shot up off the glass. Sims for Morton. Dropped it inside for Bowen. Goes back outside for Chose. Chose has some room and puts his team up one. Big basket by Chose, taking it to the basket. Inside a minute. Sanders driving and won't get it, but the rebound. Montague score the basket and the foul. They call the Stonehill foul on Andrew Sims, who picks up his fourth. Timeout, Stonehill, I believe. I haven't seen it called yet. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, Andrew Sims just fouled out. That was his fifth foul. I had him for four. Sims fouls out with five points, and that will bring Josh Mack into the game. Sean Montague will try to complete the three-point play. Boy, he just muscled that thing home there to give his team a one-point lead. That's off the mark, and the rebound, Morton. Now Chris Krause wants a timeout. 44 and a half seconds left. So he... Let's watch, watch this last play. Watch the drive and then the fall of Montague right there, able to just squeeze it home. Yeah, it's, it, see, when the, when the play isn't moving, a player drives to the basket and the people on the perimeter are moving. Very hard to block out. Montague was able to get in the lane to get that offensive rebound. A big play. 44 seconds left. If you're Stonehill, do you try to, try to score quickly and get a two for one here? Because if you wait, You'll give Southern New Hampshire a chance for the final shot. Yeah, but you don't want to rush your shot. That's the only trouble. Like you tell the kids, we got to get a score quick, and then they rush it. You want to make sure that they get a good opportunity. Uh, but you're right. Try to score at the beginning of the possession rather than at the end. Michael Bowen will inbound. So the Skyhawks have one timeout remaining. Southern New Hampshire has two. Morton driving, puts on the brakes, throws it up and in. Right-handed, right-handed. Timeout Southern New Hampshire, or is it? What do we got here? Shot clock. So score in the basket. Stonehill by one, 35 seconds left. Morton now with 27. Five second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Almonese down inside, diving on the ground, out of bounds. It will be Southern New Hampshire ball. What an effort by Josh Mack. I told you earlier what a good game he's been playing defensively. I've watched him. Throughout the game, whenever he's been in there, he's caused havoc. Doesn't, not on the stat sheet, but what a play. Sanders to inbound. 19 seconds to shoot, 24 seconds left in regulation. Sanders. Now inside for Joyce, spinning through and won't get it. And the rebound on the end line, grabbed by Morton, 12 seconds left. Spinning out of trouble, got it to Mack, up the floor, seven seconds, and a foul. And this crowd is on their feet. What a rebound by Will Morton in traffic down the other end. They call the foul on Eamon Joyce, who just fouled out. So Joyce will have to come to the bench with 16 points. I've never seen a, a more determined look on Will Morton than I see right now. What a rebound. Checking in for the 
All the free throws that Owen Chose has taken over the years. All comes down to right now when he gets to the line. He's a great shooter. Let's see what he does from the line. Fourth best in the any 10 from the stripe at 89%. He's got nine points. He can make it a three-point game here. See if Southern New Hampshire calls a timeout. Right now, they're not calling timeout. They've got two left. They're going to try it, and they're going to bring it right up. Sanders with four seconds. Almonese going to have to try it to the tie. No! And the Skyhawks win it! Final score, Stonehill 78, Southern New Hampshire 75. With the win, the Skyhawks improved to 13 and 6 in the conference, 17 and 10 overall. And with the loss, Southern New Hampshire falls to 8 and 10 in the Northeast 10, 15 and 11 overall. I think I got a pretty good idea who's going to come over and talk to us. Will Morton, you played a lot of big games internationally here. This has got to be right around the top oh. of the list, I would imagine. This one means the world to me, man. <laughs> this one means a lot. That was fun. That was a fun game. Can't lose on senior day. You, and you were absolutely determined that that was not going to happen. Yeah, no, I was determined, but the whole team was determined, you know. Uh, it's a resilient group. You've seen us come back from deficits. and. Uh, no, we're just a bunch of fighters, man, and it was, it was a great game. That was one of the most intense rebounds I've ever seen you grab that last one. <laughs> that was a lot of traffic, and that was your ball. You, no one else was taking it. No, sir, not that one. Tell me about this game itself and coming up to it, you and two other seniors. You talk about this game as, as it potentially being your last game here, but on this floor, now you're going to be back again a week from tomorrow. Yeah, no, you talk about just the meaning behind senior night. Um, you know, it doesn't really it doesn't really hit you that this could be your last game until you're really out there and, you know, you're shaking coach's hand, taking a picture. And, uh, no, all of a sudden the weight of it becomes very real. And, uh, no, it just means a lot to all of us. And it was, I really appreciate the underclassmen, you know, putting their heart out there for us too. And it was great. Was this game harder on you or your mother and father across the way? 100% my mother and father. <laughs> my mom was losing her mind, I bet. <laughs> I'm not the least bit surprised. <laughs> that was a blast. We have Thank loved you. watching you, and we're looking forward to seeing you again. Hey, I really appreciate what you guys do, too. I will. Thank you. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Will Morton with a tremendous effort. And I'll tell you what, that student body really helped him in this one as he scores 27 points to go along with 10 rebounds to lead the way for the Skyhawks. What a win, what a game. They don't get a whole lot better than that. 78-75 the final. Wow. For the Skyhawks, Will Morton, 27 points. Brandon Twitty with 14. Owen chose two big free throws, finishes with 10. Monty Ermolavicious with eight points. Six for Michael Bowen, five for Josh Mack, five for Andrew Sims. Three for Owen DeGraff. For Southern New Hampshire University, Michael Almonese was tremendous with 23 points. 16 for Emin Joyce, 15 for Sean Montague, 11 for Corey Long, 8 for Jakari Sanders, 2 for Mikey Bassetto, and a total of 75. So as it stands, it looks like we'll have two games next Sunday with the women at two o'clock, the men at four o'clock in the Northeast 10 quarterfinals. That is why we do these games. God, I got a grin from ear to ear. Yeah. Unbelievable. That was a lot of fun. So, I don't be, remember being this moved since Dave McLaughlin cut the nets down in this gym when they won the Northeast yeah. 10. Yeah. It's unbelievable. What a great, the, the crowd was just so into yeah. the game today. It was, it was like a whole different feeling. Well, the Skyhawks will win it. We'll come back in eight days and have the women, as it stands right now, what we're being told is that the women will play at 2 o'clock in the NE10 quarters. The men will play at 4. And, of course, 
playing games and all kinds of other things was what makes the NE10 playoffs fun. Stonehill also with that win, sixth in the NCAA East Regional Rankings. That's going to help them with that as well as Chris Krause tries to return his team back to the NCAAs as well. So just a great day all around. Stonehill women winners earlier today and win 78-75. That'll do it for us. Thanks to everybody who makes these broadcasts possible. Mike Manley, thank you for all your help. For Brian Buckley, I'm Charlie Bergeron. Have a good weekend, everybody.